One of the mysteries of wartime science, one of the war's most closely guarded secrets, the miracle of radar is now revealed. Complicated ground detectors and portable direction finders warn of the approaching enemy and locate him unerringly. Shortwave radio signals sent out and returned as echoes allow the plotting room to spot the target. The cathode tube and intricate setups of electronic devices play major parts in this magic eye of war and peace. And not the least of these wonders is the oscilloscope. Here is a simple explanation of radar. Waves sent out show on the oscilloscope. Beamed by transmitter and directional antennas, they strike the target and bounce back to be picked up by the receiver. And the pip does it. Navy, Signal Corps, and Air Force pictures show how ships and planes are located from a control ship. During the war, many of our vital convoys were saved by radar. The beam from our control ship swings to locate an enemy raider. Many U-boats were sent to their graves in this manner. The enemy is spotted on the scope from which distance and direction are plotted. Or from one of our scouting planes. Controls in the plane adjust wing antennas which turn until the beams they are sending echo back strongly, indicating a target. The animation describes it. The indicator picks up the ship on the left. Ship on right is indicated. Even the shoreline is mapped. Here's the way a radar equipped plane picks up an entire convoy. The directional antenna maps the identical convoy on the scope. On the ground, directional equipment spots the approach of an enemy plane many miles away. And here's the pip on the indicator. The pip remains steady if it's an enemy plane. But if the men locate one of our own, equipped with the proper instruments, well, here's the way the beam bounces. Watch the pip jump. One of the pilot's biggest problems is solved by radar. Many of our heroic fighters were landed safely during the war, and in peacetime, radar will bring our commercial transports and passengers safely home and prevent air collisions. The plane crew controlled from the ground watches the indicator, which here shows them off the beam to the right. By readjusting his controls, the pilot puts the ship right in the groove. Ground control instruments keep exact track of the incoming plane's altitude and direction. In the thickest fog or darkest night, radar-sensitive instruments guide the ship in safely. Happy landings, thanks to radar. Members of the Governor's Conference meet with President Truman on federal and state relations. The governors of seven states are here, including Governor Martin of Pennsylvania on the left. With the problem of reconversion facing us, full cooperation will be necessary before we return to normal peacetime pursuits. Sixty buses are bringing 3,000 of New York City's orphans to Long Beach, Long Island for an outing that's a red-letter day in their year. The children represent 25 organizations of all faiths. And for the 15th year, they're the guests of Dave Soden, humanitarian, who remembers he was once a kid himself. Everything is for free on the house. And take your pick. Yes, it's a day to be remembered, particularly when genial host Soden passes out the refreshments. Eat all you want. This guy just crashed the party, and what a party it was. With war.
more restrictions lifted, Chicago model plane builders assemble their handicraft for a local meet. Built to scale and perfect in every detail, these planes are aerodynamically sound, as they will prove presently. For instance, this miniature bomber, with its tiny motors, is built with the precision of a watch. When it comes to a snappy takeoff, these little fellas can do it. Watch this mail pickup, the neatest trick of the week. The operator of the plane maintains control by a wire and can control its flight to a foot. Many of the planes in the meet attain a speed of 85 miles an hour on motors that contain a little more than an eyedropper full of fuel. As aviation science advances, model builders gain more skill both in construction and in the operation of the planes. Midget airplanes offer a fascinating challenge to the mechanical skill and competitive spirit of America's youth. With more than a hundred dogs of obscure parentage entered, the Danbury, Connecticut annual show has the younger set taking the spotlight. Of course, everyone is a winner in his master's heart, and it's a hard job to choose the best team. He didn't win this year, but just wait till he grows up. Star of the show is Hector, the pup who steals all the bows. Wow, he just can't get enough of the slide. Hector would rather do this than eat. Maybe his mother traveled with a circus. Anyway, he's the life of the party when he gets together with the boys. He's a one-dog slideshow. show.